Linear regression is like that reliable friend who always gives you a straight answer. No, it won't tell you where to find hidden treasures or reveal the meaning of life, but it might help you predict the price of avocados next week. And who doesn't want to be an avocado prize psychic? But before we get too carried away, let's remember that linear regression is the foundation of many machine learning models. So whether you're a seasoned data scientist or just someone who likes data, today's video is for you. With the superpower that you're going to get by watching this video on linear regression, you'll be able to do things like weather forecasting, where you can use linear regression to guess whether you need an umbrella or a sunscreen. Linear regression also helps you figure out how to keep your batteries on your smartphone going strong, even through your marathon YouTube sessions. At its core, linear regression is like fitting a straight line to data points. It's a method used in statistics and machine learning to understand the relationship between two variables. Imagine plotting data on a graph with one variable on x-axis and another on the y-axis. Linear regression helps us find that best fit line. Why do we care? Well, it's super useful for predictions. Once we've found that line, we can use it to make predictions about the future based on past data. Think predicting stock prices, housing prices, or even how many pizzas your friends will eat at your next party. Linear regression is simple yet powerful. It's all about finding the straight line that minimizes the distance between the line and your data points. The equation of this line is what we call the linear model. To get started with doing linear regression on our own, we first need access to data. We can find this on the website Kegel, where we have this real estate data set. Now the columns available within this data set are available here, and we're going to click on download to download this entire CSV file onto our computer. We then head over to BigQuery to load this CSV file into its own table, where we'll run the machine learning SQL queries. We'll select the data set and give the table a name, and then click on auto detect schema, and also come down here where we can enter the number of rows which will be skipped as a header. We can then preview the contents of this table within BigQuery by navigating over to the table via its data set. By looking at the additional information provided here, we can see that this table has over 21,000 rows of data. And when I click on the preview tab, we can see all the columns that are within this table. And the column we'll be predicting is this price column over here. And all the other columns are going to be used as features in our model training. Before we start building the model, let's actually visualize this data. Because data visualization is the show and tell of the data world. Who needs paragraphs when you've got pie charts? Let's open Google Sheets and then navigate over to connect to BigQuery, where we'll be able to connect to the table that we just created in BigQuery. Once this table is created, we can click on this extract button, which will help us bring all the rows of data into a separate sheet. We can then examine that all the rows are available. We can then unleash our inner Picasso and select the bedrooms column, go into insert chart, and here we're going to select the histogram chart. And then looking at this data on bedrooms, we can understand that we have more number of houses with an average of three bedrooms. And we can do the same thing for the bathrooms and understand how this data is distributed across all the data. And looking at the square feet, we can see that on average, our data set has more number of houses with 1600 to 1700 square feet living area. And we can do the same thing for most of the columns to get an understanding of the outliers and understand how the data is distributed. And doing this will help us to understand what features we can then use in our machine learning training. We'll start training our model by first writing create or replace model SQL statement, followed by giving it a data set name and a name for the model. And then within options, we can define a few parameters where first we'll define the type of model we're training, which is linear regression. And then following that, we'll give it the input label column, which is the price column. Think of these input label columns as the output column. Now, because in our linear regression model, we want to predict the price of the real estate property, we are going to leave this input label column as price. If you have a different data set where you're looking at either sales data or some other data, then you would leave the column that you want to predict as the input label columns. We then select the entire query that we want to train and then click on run button. This will start training the model within BigQuery. Once the model is trained, we can click on go to model. And within this model, we have several details about the model and its training options. Well, let's first look at the training data. Within this table info, we can see that over 13,000 rows were used for training. And when we click on evaluation data, we can see that over 3,000 rows were kept away from the training data for evaluation purposes. 
Finally, under trading options, we see the actual iterations, which it says it's only one at the moment. So this training completed within one iteration. We can then come into the training tab where we can see some plots on the loss and the duration of the training. And then finally, we have this evaluation tab where we have some evaluation metrics. One important metric when we are evaluating the performance of this linear regression model is actually the mean squared error. Now to understand this even better, we can come into the documentation provided by Google and understand what exactly this mean squared error means. And we have an example over here where we have the actual value and the predicted value and then its loss and the square of its loss. And mean squared error is taking this squared loss and then dividing it by the number of samples or examples. Now like a true machine learning expert that I am, I usually write things down when I'm doing the explanation. So here's something that I wrote to explain to you what R squared metric means. So in summary, this R squared metric in our example means how much of the pricing variable can be explained by the other features that we gave as input to the model. If the R squared number is closer to one, then that means the model is a better fit. But it should also be noted that even though a higher R squared value suggests a better fit, it should be interpreted in the context of the problem and alongside other evaluation metrics. Now we see that the mean squared error loss is astronomical. Let's work on reducing this number. We know that the pricing data in our data set is in hundreds of thousands. To improve our model, we'll come back to the training data that we had given as input and we'll replace the pricing with a column that now divides the price by 100,000. And don't forget to include the price column in the except block. One other way of evaluating our linear regression model that we just trained is to actually use the ml.evaluate function. This takes in the model and the evaluation data set. To this evaluation data set, we can also provide the original data set that we had provided to the training, or we can provide the evaluation data set that we had set aside in the beginning. And to get to that evaluation data set, we'll just change not equal to zero to just equal to zero. And then we can just run this query to see what data is being sent as evaluation data set. And we see we have approximately 4,000 rows of data that will be evaluated in this ml.evaluate function. Finally, we can select the entire query and hit run. And now we see the output to this query where we have the mean squared error, the R squared, and other evaluation metrics. So far, you might have noticed that the training completes in just one iteration. That's because BigQuery automatically is using normal equation optimization strategy, where BigQuery is trying to compute the least square solution directly. There is another strategy called batch gray and descent, which we can also explore. Now, before we get too carried away, let's use this model to predict some values. And the simplest way to do that is to actually replace this evaluate with predict. And then we have the predictions for this evaluation data set. We can also go a step forward and add in the price and the difference in the actual price and the predicted price. Let's also multiply this by 100,000 because remember, we divided the actual price by 100,000 when we were training the model. Looking at these predictions, we can safely call ourselves real estate investment gurus with a very slight caveat of either winning or losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now to really understand what features are contributing more towards the predictions, we can use explain underscore predict function within BigQuery ML and provide an additional parameter where we specify the top K features we would like. In this case, we specify three features. And now we can see that we have the top features defined and we have a separate column called baseline predictions and adding these attributions from the top K features to the baseline prediction will give us the eventual predicted price. There is another function called global explain, which gives you explanation of the entire model by aggregating all these local explanation. Now to enable that, we first have to set the parameter enable global explain to true while we are training the model. And once the training is done, we can then use ml.global explain to which we provide the model. We can also retrieve the feature coefficients and the intercept using the function ml.weights, which takes in the model as the input. We can provide additional options when we are training the model, such as setting maximum iterations, changing optimization strategy to batch gradient descent, adding regularization such as L2 regularization, doing hyperparameter tuning, etc. And these are all the options that can be provided when we are training the model. And as you can see, there are quite a few. So now that you've reached the end of this video, you can start applying for all these data science roles, which are basically glorified data analyst roles, which no one wants to do because AI is slowly taking over.